this knife, this knife here, this, this is like the sweet spot. This is like the perfect belt knife to me personally. Hello, Outport East here, Outport Doors, everything fishing, everything outdoors. And thank you for joining me on the channel once again. Uh, thank you for the overwhelming support. Uh, we're at 2.2K uh, subscribers now, which is pretty sweet. And I just do a lot of random things on the channel, so thank you guys for, for joining me. This is a video that I've been wanting to make for a while. Just recently, in the past two years or so, have developed quite the addiction to sharp things. Uh, I've always used knives, I've always loved knives, but never like this. And uh, I looked at my collection today, I have the house to myself, and I figured, you know what, I'm gonna brew a cup of coffee, and we're gonna talk knives. Um, I'm gonna call this video my bushcraft knife collection or something like that, but I just wanna come off the bat and start with anything can be a bushcraft knife. Um, a good bushcraft knife is subjective to you. Um, there's men out there who can have a $15 Mora and put me to shame with their skill with that knife. I want you guys to understand that you don't have to spend a million dollars on a knife. Uh, it's fun collecting knives, but I, I say this in a lot of videos when, when I show gear, don't get too caught up in it. Um, a good bushcraft knife is the knife that you use, that you go out there and use. You can have this pile of knives and if you don't go outside and use them, none of them are a good knife. They don't do anything. They just sit there stagnant. On the property here at the church, I, I pastor at a church that uh, is on 30 acres and I kind of mess around on the acreage over there, uh, do a lot on my land in the barn. You know, so I'm constantly using these knives. I keep one of these knives in my truck. I keep other knives in other places, but I've compiled them all in one place so I can make this video for you guys. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Don't get too gear oriented that you, you know, that you either feel better than other people or you feel like you're not as good as other people. I hope that makes sense. Because sometimes when you look at gear, you can think, oh, I'm better than this person because I have this gear. Mm, probably not. If you don't have the skill to go with your gear, you're probably not better than anyone. If you, sometimes you, if you don't have the right gear, you can think, hey man, I'm not, maybe I shouldn't go outside, maybe I shouldn't do this, maybe I shouldn't, uh, maybe I can't even camp, maybe I couldn't, can't do anything because I don't have the right gear. Don't think that either. You know, it's all about you and what you do with your stuff. I didn't mean to preach a whole sermon, but... You know, I wanted to lead with that because sometimes when you look at all this stuff, whether it's fishing gear, camping gear, you start to think, hey, you know, I need this to do this. I just don't want to create that mindset on my channel. So without further ado, let's get into it. Choppers, I want to show you guys some, some big choppers. And we're going to actually split this up into some categories because we have to. So we'll split it up into kind of like the the profile, like kind of like the, the profiles of the blade. So we'll go with French trade, French trade. We'll go with wood lore style blades. We'll go with Kepart, got some Kepart. And then we'll go with Puko. And we'll just throw in a Canadian belt knife because I have one, this is actually on its way out, but I have uh, one Canadian belt knife. So we have our French, French trade, wood lore, kep art, uh, Canadian belt life style, uh, puko, and then we got some some bigger choppers, and we got a we, we got a, a random spear point in here that I, that I'll show you. Look up here, that's the spine of your blade. You can see all these blades are full tang. That means that the that the blade actually goes all the way through the handle. These here, the the handles, are called the scale. This is the butt of the blade. All these blades have a, a lanyard hole. Some of them have finger guards. So that'll be that right there. Here is your grind, right here. Not to be confused with your edge, which is down there. Then your, your blades are usually gonna have some rivets in them there, or some screws or something holding them in and some some of them are super fancy some of them aren't 
But that's pretty much the uh, the anatomy of a blade. This knife is actually the same as a PLSK-1. Highlander. And this has a saber grind. That's the grind that's on it there. This thing is a thick, thick monster. If you look at that. That thing is that thing is a beast. Great handle on it. Battle uh Battle Horse Knives makes phenomenal knives. I got a JRE sheath with that one. This is a, a Pathfinder Scout. Um, these can still be had from, from Battle Horse Knives. They are they're called the Scout Platoon. So if you want one of these, you can still buy them new. Um, this one is the Pathfinder version, which you can't get anymore. But that's also in a saber grind. But you can get these from Battle Horse Knives under the new name, Scout Platoon. And uh, a lot of these knives, they're, they're, they're made, they're, they're kind of branded by different people. So you can get like LT Wright and uh, Battle Horse Knives, just a short history. They were one company called Blind Horse Knives and they split into LT Wright and Battle Horse Knives. So you're gonna see a lot of knives that are kind of like the same kind of knife, but just a little tiny bit different. Um, it's because I believe they both have the rights to make the, the same knives. So, which there's nothing new under the sun. No, I mean, most of these knives are just copies of other knives anyway. So yeah, we're not gonna get too into that. Speaking of um, Blind Horse Knives, I actually do have one and we're moving on to the wood lore section of the knives. So this is a Blind Horse GNS. When I got it, I actually thought it was a Buckeye. That's, uh, they make uh, Battle Horse Knives make a, makes a knife called the Buckeye, which uh, looks kind of similar to this, but it actually is a GNS under, after doing some uh, research. It's a GNS. There's that. That's also in a saber grind. So all the three knives that I've shown you so far are in a saber grind. Uh, my favorite grind for knives is a saber grind. I really love the saber grind. Um, I love Scandi grinds. I love flat grinds. But if I had to pick one, I would pick a saber grind. I think it just does everything. Um, it, it's kind of like a jack of all trades in a sense. You know, if I'm just woodworking, I would pick say, I would pick Scandi. If uh, I'm just doing food prep, I'll I'll pick a thin flat. You know, it's uh, and I can make I can make a video about more like the stuff I think about knives like that too. But uh, my my opinions. But let's just keep on going. So this is the the first wood lore type design I have, which that's just the, like the blade profile, like the way it looks. You know, it's uh after a wood lore. These were French trade. Uh, I have another GNS, and this is an LT Wright. Okay, this is an LT Wright Hidden Woodsman collaboration. This thing is absolutely gorgeous. Only 50 of these made, and this is 35 of the 50. This is in Scandi. So you'll see that these knives are essentially the same. Both GNS, couple minor differences, but made by two manufacturers and uh, different grind, different um, grinds. So this one's a, this one's your Scandi grind. I believe it's a I, I believe it's a true scan. No, it's not a true. It's a it has a secondary. I'm not gonna get into that, but. Scandi grind, saber grind. Now let's get into the Keparts. I have uh, three Kepart knives. Uh, Kepart knives are very, very special to me because my first camp knife, uh, more, more expensive camp knife that I owned was an SEPR4. I loved that knife and I absolutely abused it. It did everything that I wanted it to do. I did things that I probably shouldn't have done with it, and it held up flawlessly. So it made me really fall in love with this design of knife, which is a Kephart style knife. 
This is an LT Wright Genesis in flat grind, which is my favorite grind personally for a Genesis. The Genesis is almost a perfect knife for me. <laughs> I mean, I think it, uh, I don't think any other knife gets as close to a Genesis. The, the handle always feels amazing to me. The blade, great. This one's actually really special. Uh, belonged to a friend of mine who's since passed. And uh, snakeskin, oh my gosh. It's, 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 this, this is just a beautiful knife. So that is a, uh, a Genesis. Let's move on. I'm trying not to make the, make the video drag for too long. This is a five inch Genesis. I believe these, I believe the original Genesis is about four and a quarter, give or take. And uh, this is a Gen 5. So it's just a Genesis, uh, LT Wright Genesis, but five inch blade. And this one is Scandi, as you can see. And again, broomstick handle. I mean, nothing to that handle. It's great. Feels amazing in the hand. Zero hot spots ever. Amazing finger guard. I think this, this, uh, this knife is close to flawless. I'm not going to tell you what, what's wrong with it because I don't know what's wrong with it, but nothing is perfect. So. And all these knives I'm showing you have a 90 degree, degree spine that can uh, put sparks off of a ferro rod. This is another Kephart style knife. This is a Battle Horse Salt Fork. Which is another great knife. Very similar to the, um, to the Genesis. Um, LT Wright actually makes this, a knife that is very similar to this one and it's called the Bushcrafter. So if you're looking for a knife like this, I don't know if the salt fork is available anymore, but you can get a Bushcrafter, which um, I believe is a very, very similar knife. Nice thick spine on this one, flat grind. Great. We're doing good. We're only at 15 minutes. I'm trying not to make this video like go too, too long. So this is kind of a Canadian belt knife. Uh, it's LT Wright's take on a Canadian belt knife, which a Canadian belt knife is is smaller than this. Um, they have, this is called the Northern Hunter, the large Northern Hunter. They have another Northern Hunter that they put out in flat grind that is a, uh, it's kind of like a neck knife. It's, it's pretty small. This is actually on its way out. Brother James, if you're watching, this is heading to, headed to you. Camo G10 scales, gorgeous. And I mean, this knife feels great in the hand. I've actually only taken it out once. Feather sticks like a dream. Food prep, dream. The belly on it, I'm sure you, I've never skinned something with it, but I'm sure it'll do well. Great knife. Now we're gonna go to what are my most used knives, and that is the uh, the Puko style knife. Um, these are all not really traditional Puko, but they're like uh, Battle Horse and uh, LT Wright's take on a Puko style knife. But let's start with my personal favorite, which is an A A Forge Puko. This is the knife that I pretty much keep in my bag, and it's usually always with me. And this is the, more, the most traditional style Puko that I have. You know, that just straight, simple handle, you know, spine, completely parallel to the handle. Really beautiful. Scandi grind. This is a true Scandi. This blade, oh my gosh. <laughs> look, at the, look at the handle on that thing. I don't know if it's focusing, is it? Just wow. Got those uh, brown liners there. 
Ugh, this one. That is a beautiful, 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 beautiful blade. Got from my, bro my brother Jimbo. Nothing but love for my brother Jimbo. This blade is one that I was after for a long time and I, I tracked one down finally. This is an LT Wright Legume. And man, like I was saying about the Genesis, this is another blade that is almost just perfect to me. I mean, the way it fits in the hand, the simplicity, the palm swell. I'm telling you, you do come by them, they're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna pay the price. But man, if you can, if you can get your hands on one of these, I, uh, I would totally, totally, totally not pass it up. Great blade. There. Fantastic blade. Scandy as well. This Scandy does have a secondary. Really, really beautiful. Man, I could hold that. I, I can. I love, love this blade. Last of the of the, the smaller knives, is. My main knife right now, actually, this is the knife that I've been using the most right now, and this is the uh, the Battle Horse Knives Sisu, or Susi, I forgot. It's S-I-S-U, or S-U-S-I, -S I forgot. But um, just another one of those little Puko knives. Um, this is the sweet spot for me. This knife, this knife here, This this is like the sweet spot. This is like the perfect belt knife to me personally. Uh, it can do almost everything I want it to do. What I do personally here on the property when I'm out, this is usually what I'm gonna grab. And like I said, this knife here is always in my truck. I keep this knife in my truck, just sits right there on the dashboard. I don't live in Manhattan or anything, so no one's gonna break into my truck and steal my knife. But uh, this sits right in my truck and it's always there and I love it and I use it a ton and right now this is my main knife that's usually in my bag but this knife has been on my belt almost every day this knife is <laughs> splitting boxes doing all types of stuff <laughs> right on my belt it's a great knife and like I said the the swell there it's it's smaller than the the legume but Man, these knives are these knives are very similar to me. These two knives are absolutely wonderful. I love them. And this is the second uh, one of these I've had, and I'm not gonna get rid of this one because I really love it. Got rid of the first one and I regretted it. So let's show you a couple of the of the um, the choppers I have, and, uh, and then we'll call it a good day. So this is a knife that I was after, another knife that I was after for a while. This is the Pathfinder Knife Shop uh, Forest Tool. If you ever watch um, Jake Trent, uh, Buckeye Bushcraft, uh, awesome, ch I mean, dude, if you're on my channel and you don't watch his channel, come on, man, go, 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 go show the dude some love. Awesome guy, uh, down to earth dude. Dude knows his stuff, man. Really awesome guy. And uh, he is actually why I wanted to go after one of these so bad. I was watching him use them. And I was like, dude, I need to get one of those. And then a buddy of mine reached out to me and he said, hey man, I got a forest tool. Um, would you be interested in it? And I did not hesitate, hopped right on it. The original forest tool um, was made by Jeff White which is a knife maker. And uh, this thing is phenomenal. Man, uh, 90 degree spine, hard carbon steel. This thing is a beast of a blade. Looks like a machete, it's not a machete. It's not a machete. Uh, um, it's definitely a big blade, it's not a machete, but that super, super, I mean, convex, I mean, convex edge on there. Scandy grind. It, it's very, that's why I had this little ax here. 
I took this little axe out because I wanted to show you like it's it's like an axe <laughs> it's a, it's like a small hatchet you know and uh, this thing does work um, if you want to see a full review of the knife from me I could show you one but this thing totally does work it's it's like it's like a a big knife meets a small hatchet and they have a baby and boom you get this feels great in the hand if you can get your hands on one of these definitely do it the, these are also kind of hard to come by but if you can't get one of these there is absolutely no reason you can't get your hands on these these are everywhere so here I got a little piggyback system here I'll show you the hunger list SC Azula my card of skills SC knives were where I was where my uh, my addiction pretty much started there was a point where I had about 10 SE knives and uh, love SE knives. And every one of these knives, um, not gonna lie guys, uh, you can get an SE that's comparable, that's very affordable. So if you want a uh, little segue, I'm sure you guys don't mind. Um, if you want a Kep Art knife, um, SE makes the PR4, SE PR4, and a uh, great knife. Uh, if you want a knife like this, for instance, a little, uh, a little Puko style knife with a great handle and a Scandi grind. Um, it's the SE RB3. If you wanna, it's not quite a French trade, but if you want a knife like this, look up the SE6, the SE5. Um, you're gonna get a knife that's kind of, not quite what you're getting out of this, but uh, it's comparable. So. I just just wanted to throw that in the lower price range, but still high quality knife SE is the way to go in my opinion I'm not sponsored by anyone No, I have no affiliation with anyone everything that I do on this channel um, I do because I use this stuff and I love this stuff and to be honest I've gotten emails. Uh, I've gotten all types of stuff asking me to be affiliated I would only be affiliated with companies that I'm already using that I already put my money into and none of them have reached out to me so so just to just to make that very clear on this channel I'm not pimping anything to you that I'm making money off of um, and if I ever do I will tell you and it will be a brand that I stand behind and that has integrity and that I I just stand behind I would never ever 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 on this channel sacrifice integrity for growth now if you can't find yourself a forest tool the SC Hunglis is the bomb, okay? Love the SC Hunglis. This is my second Hunglis. Kind of missed my first one. My, my first one was a, was a Hunglis 2. This is a Hunglis 1. And man, what a blade. It is coated, so uh, you're, not gonna, you're not putting sparks off the back of that thing. Um, you don't want to use your blade because then you're going to have to polish it up. And if you had to, you can, but, you know, you shouldn't. But I mean, look at that. Guys, this thing is a beast. And you know, sometimes big blades can be a little cumbersome. They can, uh, they can seem, you know, hard, un unwieldy, you know? This is not like that. This, this, it's, it's balanced well. It, it's a great blade. And I have a lot of time behind this, behind an SE Hunglis. Um, like I said, I had another one. It was a Hunglis 2. This is a Hunglis 1, but um, my other one I really beat up and this, it, it, it's a great blade. So that is the Essie Hugless spear point that I got actually with my Pathfinder Scout. It can actually go back there, but I never hold it because I, I, I don't use it. But took that thing out. Super cool. Let's focus. There you go. I'm telling you, sometimes the fancier camera is harder to use than my phone. $5,000 camera and I'd rather use my phone most time Pretty cool. Just throw that in there a little spear point. It's pretty sick Well guys, thank you guys for uh, joining me on this video. Thank you guys for stopping by the channel again uh, Thank you guys for all the support of the channel. I'm um, just know that if you're in the valley right now that valleys Don't last forever Sometimes you can you can be in a storm and the storm is the only thing you can see so it feels like it's gonna last forever but just know that it will not last forever. Thank you if you're a veteran. 
Um, I'm sorry if you came home and you weren't welcomed the way you should have been. So I want to tell you right now, welcome home. Veterans, we love you. Here at Outpour Outdoors, we love our veterans. We love the country. And we love what you did for our country. Or what you do for our country right now. We support the, the police at this channel. You know, we're, I'm not going to get too crazy. But just know, we ain't about none of that. None of that funny stuff here. But I just want to tell you, if you're struggling with addiction, I've struggled with addiction. I was addicted to drugs and I was addicted to alcohol. And Jesus set me free. I was addicted to all types of stuff. I didn't have my own mind, but I've been set free. And uh, this is a part of it, guys. Uh, this this brings me great joy and it, and it helps my mental health to get out there and, and, you know, mess with the gear, mess with the knives and sharpen the knives and all and all that stuff. Um, so, guys, I pray that there is an overwhelming peace that falls over you right now, uh, overwhelming serenity that falls over you right now, a joy that falls over you right now. And just know if you feel like no one cares about you, I care about you. I care about you. So you can't say that anymore. You can't say no one cares about you because I care about you. So thank you so much for watching the channel. Uh, please leave a comment down below. If you have any questions about these knives, uh, you can leave a comment. If you want me to review any of them, yeah, I might. So just, <laughs> uh, just uh, let me know. I'll definitely review. I, I would definitely be willing to review the ones that I have a lot of time behind, a lot of experience with. And uh, yeah, if, if that's something you're into, I, I would be willing to do that. Subscribe to the channel if you're into this stuff. I, we do fishing. Uh, I'm on a, I'm on a little four acre homestead here. I'm going to start posting videos about that. I do camping. Uh, I, I, I do outings with my little girl. Um, I will be doing outings with my little boy soon. He's only one, but you know, that's what, what we do at the channel. If that sounds like something you're into, click subscribe. If you don't subscribe, that is completely fine. I don't want to drag you along with us. God bless you guys. Love you guys.